What's going on, everybody? It's Top Bets checking back in. We had a wild week one in the NFL. Uh, so happy to have football back, NFL DFS back. Uh, we are going to dive in to week two with our first look. But before we get into it, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I've had a lot of love for all these videos. Uh, keep watching them. Keep commenting on who you think is going to break the slate. I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, so without further ado, let's go. Guys, go check out Occupy Fantasy with their lineup builder, their daily plug, their Occupy model, uh, their ultimate guides uh, for showdown slates and for uh, general DFS. They have any sport that you guys can think of. It's simply, I think you can join the Discord for about $2.99 a day. Uh, they have content standard premium options. So definitely go check my guys out over at Occupy Fantasy. Hit the link below, use that, and get in. Uh, then we got the BetUS 125% sign-up bonus. All you got to do, hit the link below, go through the checkout, make the account, and sign up with code .bets. So go check out uh, two great Great offers. Uh, all the links are in the description. All right, now we'll get into our first look with uh, positional breakdowns, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, and the tight ends. And we'll see the different pricing that we've had. Uh, some people go up, some people go down. And then we have the Monday night guys who don't get their salary reduced or increased because the pricing comes out on Monday. So we do have an advantage if those Monday night guys are in the slate. Sometimes they play uh, maybe a little bit later on. But uh, so that is like Stafford right now. So 6,400 Stafford absolutely killed it on uh, Monday night football. What did he score? 27, 27 points here. Uh, definitely a, a consideration against this Colts team that got shredded by uh, uh, Russell Wilson and company. Then you've got Murray, who absolutely balled out. He was one of my very, uh, highly owned, recommended him across all formats last week. Uh, he scored 34.56, ran it in for a touchdown like he always does, and threw for four. Uh, absolute beast mode performance. Then you got Josh Allen, probably went down a little bit, his performance from uh, in, against the Steelers. Main, main couple that I'm targeting early on probably hurts. I'm on, I was on him a lot last week as well. At home, probably could get a little bit more on this 49ers defense that just got shredded by Jared Goff. So maybe put in a, a dual threat quarterback, and he, he and he could absolutely go off. Then my boy Russell Wilson, the two game stacks here that I'm, I'm thinking about is Tennessee, Seattle, and then uh, probably another one are Dak and Herbert. So those two totals right now are in the mid-50s. You, you look at Herbert – I don't think he had the greatest of game. Yeah, he had 18 points. He threw it 47 times, though. Definitely can be a factor going forward. Then you had Dak on Thursday night football to start the season. Um, look at this. Loads. He threw it for like 58 times. So, I mean, he he absolutely threw a lot more than I thought he would. And he ended up getting, you know, 31 points. So, those are probably my main ones that I target. Maybe if, Probably Joe Burrow's my favorite for the uh, my value play. Maybe a Mac Jones, a Teddy Bridgewater, but nothing nothing uh, too familiar. Like Winston probably shot up. Winston was yeah, Winston was fifty two hundred. Now he's at sixty one hundred. So and then I think you could get Tannehill a little bit cheaper. You know, sixty three hundred against the Seattle Seattle, De Seattle defense that could uh, could potentially uh, be a shootout there. So I like those guys. Running backs, again, you, you, these, I treat them like starting pitchers in, in DFS. You know what you're going to get out of them. Probably last week was a letdown for Dalvin Cook. I mean, he had 21 points, but it just felt like he didn't have as many as many yards as he should have. Uh, but so I think his upside is still elite, especially against Arizona. Then you got Kamara in a tough matchup with the Panthers. And still a guy that I think has potential to, uh, you know, at 18 points, the game was out of reach. He had a, uh, a, a receiving touchdown. Probably my favorite, though, out of this group, out of this elite group, obviously McCaffrey. He was the number one running back with, with I don't even think he got a touchdown. But 
Chubb absolutely uh, dominated, and he's a, I think he's a 12-point favorite. So he, he's somebody you can look at. Derrick Henry is going to be a factor again this week. You cannot sleep on uh, Austin Eckler. I think Austin Eckler is probably going to be one of my highest owned running backs this week with the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. He only had 11 points last week up against that stout football team defense. Definitely think Eckler could be a guy. Uh, some value guys. A lot of people are probably going to be off Najee Harris. I think he played on 99% of this of the uh, Pittsburgh stats or snaps. So definitely a guy that you could still target at 6,300. So he was he was still at he's still the same salary. So they everybody knows he's going to be that volume based back. And if it's the same price with a slightly better matchup, might as well go might as well uh, ride that. Elliot. Definitely going to be priced down. So he was 6,700. Now he's 6,200. Probably going to make him... I'll uh, probably have to do another eye test on him. I probably won't have too much of him. The, some value guys. So the probably the most valuable player. So it's going to be you know Eli Eli Mitchell. He's at, He was at 4,000. Priced him up to five. I still don't think that's enough against this uh, Philly defense. And he's going to be the primary ball car- carrier. We'll see. We'll, we'll 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 see what Sermon does. Uh, let's see. Let's type in Sermon and where he's at. Well, Sermon's forty six hundred. If he's active, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But recording this video, I like Eli Mitchell at that five thousand uh, price point. Don't sleep on Mark Ingram. He had fourteen and a half points. Probably not going to have too much of him. Like I said, I, I like to pay up at running back and, and play the studs and then get crazy with the uh, wide receivers. And so speaking of the wide receivers, you, if you had Hopkins and Murray stack last week, I'm sure you cashed. If you had Allen and Diggs, I'm sure you did not cash because those guys were uh, pitiful. Then you got DK Metcalf and Ridley, Jefferson, and Lockett. So DK Metcalf and Lockett skyrocketed in, uh, in some price. Went from 6700 to 7200 off of his big, big game against the Colts defense. Initial look, like like I said, you're going to play in a lot of those game stacks. So Tennessee, Seattle, Dallas, L.A., the Chargers, those are probably my two favorite stacks, two highest, um, two highest Vegas total games, and then you differentiate. So instead of maybe Keenan Allen, you go and get Mike Williams down here at 6,100 who had 22.2 fantasy points. And uh, if you guys have been following me on Twitter, I have his season long over five and a half touchdowns. So having a uh, touchdown week one, loved, loved to see that. So that's the guy I'm definitely targeting this week uh, against this Dallas defense. Um, Some cheaper guys that you could probably differentiate. So Kirk absolutely went off last week, he probably skyrocketed in salary. I still think he's more of a fluke than he would be reliable. Uh, but the one guy, if this would load, one guy is going to be from Denver that is going to be my guy that I uh, end up going with a lot. But twenty, So he had 24 points, five targets, 70 yards, and two touchdowns. You go down, I'm going to search Rondell Moore. Because Moore had 10 points, but he had the same amount of targets. So he just had a couple more touchdowns. So we'll see how this shapes up. But Rondale Moore and Kirk moving forward could be two guys that you can definitely look towards. Then probably the guy that's going to take over for Jerry Judy is Tim Patrick. He had that uh, 13.9 fantasy points on four receptions, on four targets, and a touchdown. Guy's going to slide right in for Jerry Judy. Could be a, a nice salary relief guy to pay up for those big uh, running backs. And then is there anybody else that pops out below? Pittman underperformed. Callaway goes up about $800. He was the biggest bust of the week. So you, 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 go, uh, you go into that. Rieger, uh, definitely a, a capability to break the slate again. But then you got Brian Edwards. So Brian Edwards is 3,700. 
The is price can't change. Absolutely had a you know phenomenal last couple drives. He catches that touchdown pass. He's probably a little bit higher on this week, so definitely a guy that you could target. Very, very tough matchup with this Pittsburgh defense, though. So a couple guys. So I like that a lot. Then we got our tight ends. This pretty much sums it up. You know, Waller's probably going to be very, very, very highly on off of his 20 target output. Kittle, Pitts, Gronk. So there's no Kelsey on the slate. So I, I love no Kelsey slates because I don't have to make that decision. So now it's the decision is if you want to do Waller. I mean, Waller had 19 targets, 29 and a half points. I don't believe he's going to be able to do that against the Steelers defense. Pitts, I think, I mean, his price raised about $800 and he did nothing. So we'll see how many people go back to him, how many people uh, stay loyal to him. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I am probably more than likely going to hop back on that train, but not as much. So I faded him a lot and I, I pivoted to Logan Thomas. And Logan Thomas is off this slate because he played on Thursday. Uh, Cole Komet is a sleeper pick. He had seven targets. I think he could be uh, down the road, uh, a big-time contributor here. And then Gerald Everett, you know, in the shootout, I was on him. I was on him, and I took him out of my player pool, which frustrated me. But definitely think that he could be something uh, as well this week. So those are just the first look. Uh, we'll go into defenses. Don't really – care too much about them right now those are probably my top plays overall let me know in the comments below who you guys think is a good play this week who you guys are targeting who you guys are fading uh, let me know so we'll get up on here next youtube video is going to be released on friday night to saturday morning will be our top plays and top stacks who we are targeting and go from there see you guys